I've lost my selfie stick, which is the only investment that I ever made into uh, this channel. Anyway, so Lukács and Adorno. Lukács is a Hungarian Marxist philosopher and uh, you know social critic, literary critic, general all-around art critic. Adorno is a uh, German philosopher, social critic. I think he does like more social criticism and less literary criticism than Lukács. He, Adorno writes mostly about uh, music, but um, they're both um, like Marxist guys uh, writing at the same time, around the same time, <clears throat> who are interested in aesthetics, culture, society, that sort of thing. And you know, they, they were uh, in dialogue with each other, as all of these uh, people at the time were. Lukács, um, he stayed behind the Iron Curtain. He stayed in Hungary um, after the revolution, obviously. He was pretty young at the time, but uh, Adorno, he lived in West Germany, he spent a bunch of time in California, New York, the United States, you know, moved. He lived in England for a time, spent time in France, whatever. He's, he is like a Western European guy, whereas Lukács um, stayed behind an iron curtain, which I think is very remarkable and is going to be relevant to the kind of a philosophical, to his position within the philosophical disagreement uh, between these two people. And that disagreement was, it really came out of the 30s and was based around uh, the ideas of formalism and realism, especially within aesthetics. Adorno being the uh, representative for modernism, which is in, which you can talk about as formalism, and um, Lukács is the guy who's big into realism. Which I think, I mean, like considering Lukács's like uh, situation and staying within uh, the USSR after the revolution, it's interesting to think about his realism within that context because, you know, as, as we all know, um, socialist realism became like uh, like a state-sanctioned aesthetic. It was like the official aesthetic of the USSR, and it was like very heavily enforced, uh, like around the time of the 30s, like when Stalin was really. Uh, you know, in, in full swing. I mean, later after the death of Stalin, it became like more acceptable to do like modernist abstract works. But uh, you know, especially in the first several decades of the 20th century, realism was really like the state-sanctioned um, aesthetic for all output in all of the various forms of art. So, I mean, Lukács obviously he was not a um, simple, like, uh, stooge for the regime or whatever. He had, like, plenty of run-ins and disagreements with the status quo, with the, um, the party, with Stalin himself, I think, had, like, a personal vendetta against Lukács, as well as some of Lukács' associates. Um, but Lukács, like, he, despite having all of these, um, uh, like personal disagreements and like kind of like being censored in times by the party as well as uh, like self-censoring um, he still like uh, in some sense on the same page as the party in advocating for realism whereas Adorno who is you know in West Germany at the time was uh, big into modernism which is again like mostly are largely very significantly defined by uh, the move away from uh, like realistic representation and toward modernism, modern uh, abstract art, which is like really a defining characteristic of what modernism is. I mean, not all modernist art is like abstract in the strictest sense, but um, uh, like this movement t away from realism and towards formalism 
towards uh, like formal experimentation as the mode of representation rather than strict realism is very important for what modernism is, which is why, you know, in in um, in the in the terms of just like the strict uh, like formal analysis between what realism as a like overall art body represents and modernism, you know, you can talk about it as being realism and formalism, where, whereas formalism or modernism is defined by like uh, having like more intentional use of and experimentation with formal techniques, which is how you get abstraction. Um, and abstraction as set, like it really fits into Adorno's overall philosophy and his view of um, like the institution of art as this kind of like autonomous social institution that has like a dialectical relationship with the rest of society, but uh, it, it is still like essentially autonomous, which is why um, you get Adorno like uh, valorizing this uh, like technique and you know formal aspects of the work so heavily over their realistic aspects and their you know like. Uh, real referentiality. Um, it's because, like, for him, art, is, like, the social significance of art comes down to, uh, like, it's technical or, like, literary or it's, like, the significance and the truth of the artwork as a work of art, like, in its own terms, in, in, not in, um, like, reference to the person who is viewing it, but it, it, as, like the, the value of art is defined by the reference between the artwork and its tradition without having to be mediated by like the subject who is viewing it, which is what realism is all about and Lukács especially. So when you when you look at it like this in these kinds of terms, um, like their disagreement is it's really about uh, like more generally, more philosophically, it's about how they view the epistemic subjects. So Lukács, um, for him, like the social, like Lukács as a realist, as a guy who is, you know, in a complicated sense representative of uh, the actually existing socialist state uh, that he was, that he lived within and contributed to. Um, like the significance of an artwork is always going to be mediated by the person who, by some subjective person who is like, uh, you know, either uh, like analyzing the work of art or producing the work of art or uh, just like receiving, consuming the work of art. Um, so like his, his realism in that sense, it's about like how um, the work of art is expressive of like an individual person's overall worldview and how it reflects a kind of worldview, um, which is kind of like the philosophy of socialist realism, where uh, like the idea of that art movement is about like reflecting or, or like creating um, representations for what the communists, the Russians, wanted the communist utopia to be. Like, they were not, like, um, imagining it as a future, as we would, if we were to do such a thing, if we were to try to, uh, like, do a socialist realist artwork, it would really be utopian in the sense of, like, projecting onto a future, whereas the idea of socialist realism is projecting onto the present. They have already attained utopia and they are in the process of constructing it through all of these uh, forms of representation, which is, you know, why it's like the, the realism is very important because they want to have this kind of direct engagement with, uh, like, reality. In, in the case of aesthetics, um, it's the reality of art history overall and how like the new socialist Soviet aesthetics are relating to the overall tradition of um, art history and like history as a whole. So I think it's, I mean, it's pretty interesting to think about these two guys and uh, their kind of disagreement over um,
realism and modernism. I think that like what like the the final point that I want to make, and I want to bring in a third guy, an associate of uh, Lukash. His name is Mikhail Lifshitz. He is like a pretty unknown. He's very untranslated writer. He had a long career as well, but most of his works remain untranslated. And um, he is even more of like a kind of hardline orthodox guy than Lukash, and uh, he's like very critical of modernism and. You know, he is. He still had the same kind of like. Uh, he still had like a lot of principles, and therefore he came into like a kind of antagonistic relationship with the Stalinist uh, regime, just because like the Stalin's regime did a lot of things that were wrong. So inevitably, that's going to happen. But he he still like ultimately comes down on the side of realism. Um, but like, what is, what is really interesting is that uh, you know. It, there, there comes to be this kind of like uh, ontological status of the the person who is producing the realism. That is very important. And what is really like important when considering realism versus modernism, and especially in these historical debates, is the position, the social position and relationships that these guys had. Lukash and Lifshitz were both communists, they lived within a communist society. So their conception, that the possibility of realism for them as, you know, historically situated, uh, like socially situated living beings is different from us now who have no, uh, like, world historical communist society that we can look to or participate in. We, so I think, like, um, I mean, ultimately, both of these, uh, like, aesthetic regi regimes, realism and modernism, are somewhat obsolete. Like, they're not very powerful forces in the contemporary art worlds. Um, so, like, the relevance of this debate and these two guys in particular is, like, you know, questionable. But ultimately, like, um, the possibility, like what Lukash is advocating for realism, is not really possible now. So I think that like Adorno's uh, like views on modernism are probably going to be more relevant to the idea of criticizing and making art within our you know present, or especially criticizing art that is produced and does form a part of the overall social and cultural relationships that we are, you know, engaging with. Um, whereas Lukács, I mean, I think obviously there's like a lot of importance in studying uh, like these kinds of people who lived within a different histo history than we did. Um, but, you know, uh, maybe towards a different end rather than critique more like creation or something. That's been a very long rambling video, but uh, I'll see you next time.